Amen. Is there consequences for our actions? Do we have consequences for our actions? Well, there are some places you go to you may not get that idea that we have consequences for our actions. You may think that we could just do whatever we want. And God will just love us no matter what we do. I've, got, I've heard people go as far as you could turn your back for, uh, uh, to God and he'll still be right there for you. Well, these people are ignorant of the scriptures. They know not what they say. These are false teach, teachings. Teachings by dogs who do not care for God's people. If you love God's people and you desire for them to do well, you're going to speak the truth. Yeah. And tonight, this is the truth that we're reading here. Nobody, nobody made this up. This came from God, this word that we have here. Because although they knew God, no excuses. Yeah. Does, is there anybody going to be without it with an excuse for why they did what they did? Why? No, they knew God. They did not glorify him as God. When we stand at the judgment seat of God, when we stand before him, and I've thought about this oftentimes with joy now, but there's some who don't even want to think about this the day they stand before God. They will do anything to get away from that day in their minds. Because when you, everyone who stands before God is going to have to give an account for why they glorified him or they did not glorify him. Why they were thankful or not. Everyone. There's not going to be any excuses. There's not going to be, well, I didn't know. Mother, you did know. We have it here that God says that they knew. They do know. It doesn't matter what they say. They know. It doesn't matter what their excuses are. They know. God is not going to be at fault at the judgment. Nobody's going to point fingers at God and say, it was your fault. It's not going to be like that. Heads hang low. Fear before God. This is the way humble. There's not going to be any arrogance. People, are, men are arrogant now, brethren. They're not going to be arrogant then. Arrogance is, will, will cease. Men are arrogant until, as we were talking about, Brother Gene talked about this this morning, just a little wind comes through. And for a while, arrogance stops. Just a little, the temperature just picks up just a little bit, arrogance stops. Goes down just a little bit, arrogance. A little rumbling of the ground, arrogance stops. And then when it settles down, well, they go back to their ways. Forgetting that soon judgment is going to be here. Here we see that God is not going to leave room for excuses. It doesn't matter who you are because God is the point. Not you. Not you men who think that you're so high and mighty before other men because of whatever your, whatever your accomplishments are within men. Those accomplishments mean nothing done apart from God. So the point here is God. We live to know God. Without, without, without God, this is what hell is. It's forever without God. Because we're made to be with God. To know God. To be with Him. If we're not with Him, this is hell. It, it, it just, it, we can't explain it. Gnashing of teeth. I mean, 
you can say this, but this is, this is hell to be without God because we're made to be with him, to know him. So there are consequences for our actions. Men may go out of their way to explain away God. Oh, there's no God. We just, we just, we just, we just evolved. I mean, it does, this makes no sense. It's foolishness. But this is what happens when people, they don't give themselves to know God. This, this is the way that, you see, when you know God, you look around and you say, and you see people who live without God, who their capabilities in this world may be high. They may have a high aptitude to understand certain things, but the things of God, they can't understand it. Simple things, brethren, things that are, the children know. They can't understand it, and they try to explain it away. They try to, and they, they get really creative with the way they, they explain things. They set up whole schools, and they, they make up this big lie to explain away God. But see, the truth is the truth. Now, they can make up lies to cover up the truth, but the truth is still there. It's not going away. What are they going to do with it on Judgment Day? What are they going to do when truth is, the, as, as hard as they try to suppress the truth, to cover it up, it's still there. It's not going anywhere. You can run from the truth, but it's going to be right there with you. Some may say, there is no God, but does that make God any less God? No. We were made to know God. So they have no excuses for why they were not seeking God, seeking to know God. Nobody, I'm talking about nobody. Nobody's going to have an excuse for why they didn't use their energies and whatever was given to them to seek to know God more clearly, to build on what God has given them. God has given us all to know him, and we're to build on that. Amen. So there, and there's consequences. There's consequences for those who do not build on what they know. You, what God has given you, if you take what God has given you, your understanding, and you take it and you bury it in the dirt thinking that you're going to do a good thing, it's not a good thing. It's bad. Because God expects what he has given you, and he's given you to know him. He expects you to build on that. He expects you to extend yourself, Amen. to know him, to pursue him, to earnestly seek him. With your whole being. Now is that going on. Wherever you look. If it's not. There's something wrong. Now, I know this to be true. When I first became a believer. I had a hard time. Finding people that understand the truth. Why is this? Why is it when God has given us. And we're supposed to be building on this. And we're supposed to be sharing. With, with, with one another. But the evil one is at work. Yeah. He is doing a work within, within the churches. He's doing a work to suppress the truth, to not let it get out. Some may say that all they know is they love God. And that sounds innocent. That sounds nice, but it's not. That's when you, when you start... Like a little baby, you know that you love God, but that's the that's very, very, very beginning. Very beginning. <laughs> Within five minutes, you should be building on that. You should, you should take off on that. But why is this not happening? This is not at all glorifying God. To have what you have and not to build on it is not glorifying God. And that's what we're talking about in this text. That they did not glorify God. They knew God. 
but they did not glorify God. This is going on today, brother, all over the place. They knew God, but they did not glorify him. They had the capacity to build on what God has given them, but they buried it in the dirt and left it behind. Laziness and just slothfulness is not even a good excuse for what is going on. Not glorifying God. You know, you, when you love somebody, I mean, let's just be serious. Just a, a, just a fundamental here. When you love somebody, you go out of your way to know them to understand them, to spend time with them, to seek them. So really, if someone says that they, they love God, but that's all they know, that would be like, I have a wife that I love, but I would never come home to her. I would never see her, never spend time with her. But, I, but you ask me, well, Brother Jeremy, you, know, you don't even live with your wife. But I said, well, all I know is I love her. That wouldn't go real far with Nikki. <laughs> Let me tell you, she wouldn't put up with that. Yeah. God doesn't put up with it either. Amen. Amen. You think that you can say that you love God and never spend time with him and don't, and ha don't even know anything about him and say, but all I know is I love him. You're a liar. Yeah. You don't love God. If you love him, you have a great desire to, to know him. And this is glorifying to him. You're glorifying God when you, when you build on what he has given you, when you have a desire to know him, to seek him, to, to, to know everything about him, to prepare yourself to be with him. See, some people, all they do is prepare themselves. They build little sand castles in the sand. And they're... Someone comes along and says, hey, but don't you own all that property up there? You could build a big old mansion up there. But they're like little children on the beach saying, oh, yeah, but I just want to build my sand castle right here. And at the end of the day, the water just washes it away. They're left with nothing. That's what they're doing. They're playing in the sand. Yeah. God is like, I'm here. He, it's not only does he want you, he... He expects you to, to know him, to, to, build on, to build on what he has given you. And we do this with one another. This isn't just one person doing all the building because we pay him a paycheck to stand up in the pulpit. This is the body. If the truth is falling down, it's because the, bo the whole body is not working together. It's the body who builds together. That glorifies God. It's the body that's working together. If, the, if this doesn't happen, somebody's dropping the ball. Who is it? Who's dropping the ball? Is it you, my friend? Listening to me now? If each one of us don't build day by day, every morning on what God has given us, we have dropped the ball for the brethren. We have failed the brethren. We have to work together to build. Not one person doing it for the whole body. It's the body working together. This is glorifying to God. So we seek him. We seek to know him and this is glorifying to him. Not the other way around. It's not that we're living our lives here and that it's God's job to follow us around and to, to just be ready to just answer whatever question that we need or our desires. That's not the way it is. God isn't our magic little genie in a lamp that he's just waiting for us to make requests and that he's just here for us. And, and well, I'll, 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 I'll pray when I need him. That's when I'll pray. When I need something out of God, that's when I'll pray. That's not the way it goes. We are made to seek him, to know him. We worship God with our lives. This is, see, worshiping is not getting up and playing a song 
And if everybody's on key, well, we're in a good worship. And then when the worship is over, then we go back to our little lives. That's not worship. Worship is our lives. It's waking up in the morning, crucifying the flesh, putting on the armor of God, setting out to, to live your life to know God, Amen. to help the brethren. That's loving the brethren. What is loving the brethren? Here we are back in love again. What is love? Is, is love being a, a hindrance to the brethren, to dragging the brethren down? Love is helping one another, building one another up in our most holy faith, strengthening one another. That's true love. How do you know? Because you love the brethren. You love the brethren because you glorify God with your very life. With every part of your being, that is loving the brethren. That's glorifying God. And we glorify him and him alone. His glory isn't for any, anyone else. Right. It's not to be thrown around. It's for God and God alone. There isn't a different God for different people. He is God. And we must make it our aim to know him. To know his ways. And to always do his will. And his will alone. Jesus said, John 6, 38, I am come down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. See, we got these so-called ministries with different gods today, serving different people for their different desires, serving different people. For their different desires. Instead of seeking to know God. And to help the body grow to know God. To be built up to be with God. That, that's the point is for us to be with our God. To be a fit dwelling place for our God. If that's not what's going on. Then it's fake. It's false. But it's going on all around us. We are not here to live our lives for ourselves, to cater to the flesh. God will cut off the understanding of all who do not seek him. For those who live their lives for themselves, understanding will be cut off. The, for those who do not glorify him. 2 Thessalonians 1.8 says, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's 2 Thessalonians 1.8. He's taking vengeance. Why? It's because even though they knew him, they did not glorify him. Is this, a lot, is this the, the type of God that people are talking about today? Taking vengeance because outside of Christ, this is where vengeance Amen. is going to be placed on everyone outside of Christ. Amen. Those who do not build, do not glorify vengeance. Because although they did not know, they did, because although they did know, excuse me, because although they did know, they did not glorify him. Hearts and minds being pinned to this world, they could not speak and teach about the truth. What do you do, brethren, when you're really thankful for something? Do you... Do you don't tell anybody about it and you just say you just take it, you just take what you've been given you. It's a secret, you just don't tell. No, thankful. We what we what Nikki and I just went through, we were so thankful for being blessed that we sent thank you cards out 
to people. We, thankfulness, it makes you want to do something. It makes you want to tell people. You don't want to hold it back. You, thankfulness causes you to do something. And you know, even we, we sent out thank you cards, and then we got a thank you card back from somebody for saying thank you for giving us a thank you card. See, thankfulness causes you to do something. See, they, didn't, they did not glorify God, nor were they thankful. I mean, you, you look around, and you see all that God has done. And it's, it's obvious that we have a great creator. Amen. Let us seek him. Let us, let us want to know him more clearly. Amen. No, instead, this is what you do. Thank, when you're thankful. Instead, they, they did everything they could not to think about God. To come up with inventions of ways to get rid of God out of their mind. To come up with other gods that fit their agendas. That fit what they wanted to do here in this world. Because they were not thankful. They did not glorify God, and they were unthankful. So what happens? Darkness. They have darkness. And God's understanding, this doesn't take a long time. When you're unthankful, when you're not giving glory to God, and he cuts you off, you may have some area in this world that you may be able to really do some kind of a special work amongst men. And men may pay a high price for whatever you can do. But when it comes to understanding God, pfft, nothing. You, you just start believing whatever somebody tells you. Yeah, we, we evolved. That sounds pretty good. From what? Well, that was such a long time ago, we really can't tell you how it happened. See, these are just foolish. It's so foolish. But why do people buy into this? It's because they've been cut off. It's because they did not glorify God. They were not thankful, and God cut them off. Right. Of old... Hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. Psalm 102.25. It's in the secret. God hasn't hidden this. He's opened this up. He, he's shown what he, is, what he has done. Why, why are there so many who, can, who can't see it? They've been cut off. They are unthankful. Thankfulness pushes you with a desire to know more about the living God, which made the heavens and the earth and the seas and all the things that are therein, Acts 14, 15 through 17. Thankfulness will cause you to want, will give you a want to know more the one who framed the world with his word. Hebrews 11.3. This is what thankfulness does. It makes you want to know more and then, and then speak about it. To, I want to give you an example. I got one more here. This is what thankfulness does. It makes you want to know more about the one who hangeth the earth upon nothing. Job 26, 7. Although they knew God, they did not pursue God to build on what God had given them. You can have someone who has this thankfulness and desire to glorify God. And they have sharp thinking. I'm going to use an example here. And then you could have somebody else who doesn't glorify God, who doesn't have this thankfulness that we're talking about here, 
And they, no matter how, what position they're in, they, they're understanding they cannot see this. I'm going to use an example in Acts 19, 22, where Paul is talking to Agrippa. And I'm going to start at 22, where Paul says, Having therefore obtained help of God, I continued unto this day, witnessing both to the small and the great, saying no other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Now, just, you know, follow me here. Paul's calm. He's in prison. He's, he's speaking to Agrippa. I mean, this is a, this is a very high and, and lofty position that, that Paul is calm. His mind is clear. That Christ should suffer. And that he should be first, that should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And then Festus speaks. With a loud voice, he's shaken. He's like bewildered here. This is a prisoner. So he says with a loud voice, Paul! beside thyself much learning don't make them don't make you mad what's wrong with you Paul don't you know who I am you talking to me like this Paul's got a clear mind speaking calm this man Festus he's beside himself he doesn't know he doesn't even understand what Paul's talking about this is this is madness you're talking about why because he didn't glorify God. He wasn't thankful. And so what Paul was giving him was too high for him to understand. This is a man of understanding in this world. But the things that Paul's talking about, too high. So he said to him, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. See, this is how when you have the peace of God because you know God and you glorify God and you're thankful to God, God can give you understanding like Paul to understand these things. But if you're not, God will take it away. He'll take it away and darkness will set in. And it happens quickly too. For those who think that they could live for God and then go right into the world, just like a switch on and off, it doesn't work like that. A desire to know more the living God which made heavens and earth. So the God of this world blinded their minds. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. There are consequences for not living for God. There are consequences for spending yourself for the world, however you, however you, you make up your mind, how you spend your time. However you spend your time, is it glorifying to God? Is it with thanksgiving to God? Because there are consequences. Their thoughts became futile. It's because our minds, our minds that God has made are for God. And if they're not used for God, futile, they're meaningless, really meaningless. They go nowhere. Because if our minds aren't made for what they're meant to be made for, God is our purpose of being. I've heard this. I've heard people say this in amongst the churches today. I really want to know what my what God's purpose is for my life. He doesn't have a purpose for your life. He has a purpose for His people, and that's to glorify Him and to be thankful and to seek Him and to know Him and to build together as a body. That's what God has. You want to know your purpose is to know God. And to be, a, uh, to be a productive part of the body. To build 
with one another. To glorify him. That is to live for him. That's, that, what is life? What is living? You, you hear people in the world say, now that's living. No, it's not living. That's dying. The world, all they know about is dying. If you, if you want to know how to live, you live for Christ. To live is Christ. To die is gain. In the world, dying. That's all they know. So thankfulness is to speak to others about God. Teach and share what we know so as the body we can build up. The reason we are here, brethren, is for God. If we are not living for God, darkness will set in. Death will come. Their foolish hearts became darkened. Thy whole body shall be full of darkness. Matthew 6, 23. To think that you can live without God and think that the light of the Lord shall be with you is foolishness. Today we have false teaching that says God loves you no matter what. No matter what you do, no matter who you are, no matter how you live, God's with you. I mean, this teaching is rampant. That God's for you no matter what. There is no consequences for living ungodly, unholy, unrighteous. I know it, it sounds crazy, but this is a teaching that I've heard over and over again. But it's false and it's untrue. Without God is darkness. Isaiah 60, 20 says, Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. The Lord is our light. So without him, darkness you walk away from God, you walk away from light. You have no understanding. And it doesn't matter who the person is that withdraws from God when giving their time to other things, quickly they will lose ground wherever they made ground. Quickly. When darkness sets in, and it will, Men, although they think that they are wise, they're foolish. Without God, it's that, that you're foolish. Wisdom comes from God. Amen. The things that we have only come from because we're close to God and we're living close to Him. Instead of turning the God of creation that has eternal power, instead of turning to the God of creation that has eternal power, they turn to gods they have made up. They change the glory of the incorruptible God into the image made like corruptible man. And the birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. It, it just sounds foolish, doesn't it? To make idols like little golden statues and wooden statues. It, may, it just sounds foolishness. But this is what quickly happens when they depart from God. To think that God could look like a cow or a bird? Foolish. But this is what men have come up with. Apart from God, to try to, to justify themselves living apart from God. To justify their ungodliness and their unholiness and their perverted ways. They make up their own gods. Yeah. Foolish. Darkened hearts. To see, just to see how perverted the gods that men have come up with is to see how bad sin really is. Sin, sin is, it just takes them and nails their head to the ground. Some may say today that 
Well, that's, that is foolish. That's foolishness. We don't have anything like that. Well, how about these ministries that they have, so-called ministries, that they have one ministry for this person, and they have one more ministry for that person, and, and a ministry. How about that? When we have one God for one people, how, isn't that making up gods? Making up gods for themselves to, to help them in whatever they're doing over here? We've got this kind of ministry over here. We got this kind of ministry. Well, it's not really a cow, a golden cow, but it's not really what God's doing either. Those are gods that they have made up today. They may not run around with wooden statues anymore, but they run around with their own little ministries that they have formed for themselves to justify whatever they're doing. I've got my ministry over here. We have one God and one people. We don't have different things that we're all doing. God is not made out of wood, nor is he a God for different people. Different little gods for different little people. One God, one people. John 3.36 he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Amen. So much for the ministry that God loves you no matter what, and we're going to just pass out hot dogs and bring them in. Well, no, why don't you tell them that God, his wrath is on them. And we'll see who's serious that will come in and who will run away. How about that? Tell them about the real God. And we'll see the real people come in. And the fakes run away. What about the God that wants you to have a good life in this world and wants you to just love yourself? How about that God? John 12, 25 says, He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hath hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Well, I guess that God's out. We don't live for this world. We don't, we don't love our life in this world. We are preparing to be with our God for eternity in glory. Change the glory of the incorruptible God into the image like corruptible man. Men cannot understand God apart from God. They make up their own little gods, they'll never know God. It takes God to understand God. It takes drawing near to Christ Jesus to have things open up to you. You allow yourself to be Pull away by the world, your understanding is cut off and it becomes foolish. John 17, 3 says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Amen. This is life, brethren. Amen. You want to know what real living is? Know God. Yeah. Draw near to him. Have done, just throw off the world and run to the Lord. Live daily for your God. The point is, without God, we're a mess. We, we, we're no good. We are fit for destruction apart from God. Proverbs 17, 14, 32 says, The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous with hope in his death. See, we look forward to being with our God. While they try to bury the truth, we try to dig it up and shine it and look at it more and prepare to be with our God. As we make it our aim, our goal to know God, Death becomes our friend. 
Because we will be with our God. We will know him more perfectly, just as we desire. We will get our heart's desire. We desire to know God. Well, when death comes or Christ Jesus, whichever, it doesn't matter to us. We're ready to be with our God. So we will be ready and waiting to be with our God. We look forward to spending eternity to know our God. We know him now, and we build on our knowledge. And when we're with him, we're going to know him more perfectly. Thank you, brother. Brother Gene.